At the beginning of this year, Games Workshop decided to announce that they were bringing their specialty games back. That means Necromunda, possibly Warhammer Quest, games like Morheim, and of course, one of the greatest cult games of all time, by many, Blood Bowl. Today, we're going to look at the last edition to come out and give you a feel for this game that's going to be released as the first part of their specialty games. So we're going to go over some of the rules and some of the living rule book. So I hope you'll join me down at the table and let's take a look at Blood Bowl. Now as you can see here we have our pitch laid out. There are two scoring zones, of course a home and away. Uh, in the middle of the field we have some of our players. We have four orcs on one side and two pretty much defenseless weak elves on the other side with our football in the middle. Now for the purpose of this I'm not going to be able to go over all the rules but I'm going to give you a brief overview so you get a good feel for it. What you're going to need is what is called blocking dice and of course 2d6 and if you get a chance there's nothing that hurts than trying to play for the Blood Bowl trophy itself. So if you could ever get your hands on one of these, please do. And this is a printed out sheet, but the game does come with sheets, and I assume that the newer game will also come with it. What you'll be given is a million dollars in gold, or a million gold pieces, and you'll be able to afford and buy your team. You'll mark down your team and all your stats. Each character has a stat of movement, strength, agility, and armor, and whatever skills their particular race Each has. Each player has a team board, and depending on how much money you spend and how wisely you spend it, you may have reserves, and reserves will go into this box. Should somebody get knocked out, they would go into this box. And if somebody is dead or injured, well, I can think you can see by the coffin, they definitely go into this box. The game is played into two halves with eight turns. Each team gets eight turns per half for a total of 16 turns for the entire game. This bar here is depending on how many re-rolls you have to be able to re-roll certain abilities or certain fails. Now earlier I showed you four orcs on the field. You can have up to 11 players but they can consist of certain only of certain types. You can have 12 linemen on the team, but they have a movement of 5, a strength of 3, an agility of 3, and an armor of 9, which isn't bad. But you would want to get a thrower on that team, and you can have two of them. They cost 70 gold pieces, where the linemen are only 50 gold pe uh, 50,000 gold pieces. They have an agility uh, a movement of 5, a strength of 3, an agility of 3, but an armor of eight. But they have sure hands, which means that they can pick up the ball and possibly have a, a re-roll as well as pass, which we'll explain a little bit later. You can have black orc blockers. As you can see, they're pretty expensive at 80,000 gold pieces, but they give you a key stat, and that's strength. And strength is very important, as important as agility. Now, for what they have in strength, four, they lose in agility and they have a very high armor at nine, but a slow movement of four. And of course, you can have four blitzers, which are probably the most balanced on the team with six movement, three strength, three agility, and nine armor, and the ability block. Remember those poor two dark elves that were just sitting there? Well, they also have their own cost and ability. And for 70,000, you can have 12 linemen. Or you can have two throwers at 90,000 with a movement of six, a strength of three, but a four agility, which means these guys are pretty nimble. And we'll show you what that all means. But their armor is pretty low at eight, and the witch elves have an, uh, have an armor of seven, which is very weak. But every elf always has an agility of four. Movement of seven and six is a very high movement, which means they're very fast and agile, but not very strong. So let's take a look at the pitch and see how this all works out. Now let's take a look at our current situation here and leave our guys here. The orcs are going to try to clear out this zone so this particular runner can go pick up the ball. So how are we going to do that? Well, 
this is where we get the explanation about blocking dice. Now, because this orc has a strength of three and this elf has a strength of three, it is a, considered a tie. And when both strengths are equaled, we only use one blocking dice. But what does a blocking dice mean? Well, let's take a look at it. The arrow always means a pushback. That means if this was to be rolled, then what would happen is the orc would be pushing the elf back in any one of these squares that they choose. And they would be allowed a follow-up action, which means that if he pushed him back here, he would be able to follow up. Now, why would you want to follow up? Well, very easily. Because if this, when it came the elves' turn, if they wanted to move out of this square, there's a penalty moving out because this particular model is adjacent to the square, which means he's in his zone. Now, let's take another look here. Let's say this particular role came up. This is considered the defender is pushed back if they have the dodge ability, and that's what the question mark is. If they do not have the, the dodge ability, they are considered knocked down and pushed back, which means then you would roll against their armor. But let's, for this purposes, just say that nothing happened on that particular uh, chance there. Now, this can be very, very messy. This means that both would actually fall down. They would hit each other and both sides would get to roll against each other's armor unless they have the ability block. Block would negate this. So say this particular orc had block and the elf did not have it, they would be considered knocked down and then rolled against their armor for injury. Then of course we have the skull. The skull always means that the block failed and that, unfortunately for the orc, no matter what ability he has, he's going down. The orc's turns are done, we roll against their armor, and then it would be the elf's turn. And finally, knock down. As simple as it says, defender goes down. He gets to be put back into any one of these positions. He is knocked down. Now, since the elves have an armor of eight, you would roll two dice to see if you beat it. That, of course, would do nothing. So, all that would happen is that the gentleman, the elf, would be stunned. On a two to seven, the player is stunned. And what happens is the player is turned over. And the next turn, when it becomes the player's turn, they are allowed to turn them back face up, and then the turn after that, they'll be allowed to stand up. Now, standing up is costs half your movement. So if you have a movement of six, you can stand up and still move three spaces. The next, which is eight to nine, is knocked out. The player is removed from the pitch and put into that box that we had saw earlier. And what happens is, at the beginning of the next half, if it's the first half, at halftime, you'll be able to roll. Uh, you'll be able to roll on a one to three. They must remain in the knockout box for the rest of the game, which means you'll be down players for the rest of the game unless you have reserves. That's why it's very important to have reserves. On a four to six, they can be reset up and brought out back onto the field. If you roll a 10, badly hurt, the person is put into the dead and injured box and is out for the rest of the game. Serious injury. Well, that's pretty bad. That means that they're going to miss the rest of the game, miss the next match, okay, and then have to roll on the serious injury chart, which means they can have minuses to their their abilities. And dead, well, that pretty much sums it up. On a 12, if you can roll a 12, double sixes, that character's dead. But let's get back to this situation here. So, let's just say, for all intents and purposes, this person is knocked down, and they decide to move up and follow up. Now, we have another situation here. 
this particular orc here, I, I mean this uh, elf, we have another situation right here where this elf has a strength of three. This orc has a strength of three and this black orc has a strength of four. Now, if this orc was to attack and tackle this person, they would get what is called an assist. So four plus one is five. Now, five, which is one player's stronger, you would get two dice. So your odds actually get better and you would be able to roll two dice. On this occasion, you would get to choose. So, of course, you would choose the knockdown and this player would be knocked back. You would roll for injury, which 11, which means he would be off the pitch and the black orc would be able to follow up. And in this case, the orc would be able to move up, roll against its agility, which is three, and on a three or better, you would be able to pick up the ball. Let's see if he does pick up the ball. Well, a six means he picks up the ball, and the orcs are well on their way to going for a touchdown. But let's just look at a couple other things real quick. So we have a good idea how this whole system works. Let's say, for instance, that this particular orc was right here. And this orc decided to hit. With a strength of four versus three, then four, five, and six. That would be double their strength, which means three blocking dice, which increases your odds even more. So you, what you want to do in this game is you have to look at the situations and be able to think ahead and give yourself the chance to have the most successful roll to continue. Because once you fail, your turn is over. Now, on another situation, say it is desperation time, and they need, there's only a couple turns left, and this orc, um, this elf has to get to that ball somehow, and decides to attack this orc and take a shot, and 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 take an impossible shot. Well. What happens here, because his strength is three and his is three, but he gets two assists, it would be two dice and the opposing player would choose. So we would roll the dice <laughs> and fortunately for the elf, he would, the opposing player would choose either for his orc to fall down or for them to both fall down depending if they don't have if they don't have block. In this case, neither one of them has block, so they both would fall down and a roll against each other's injury, which would cause the orcs to have the turn again. So that, in a nutshell, is kind of how this all works out. Now, there's so many different variances and so many different teams, and there's so many, many, many different combinations of things you can do. And that pretty much spells out how this would play out. And this would go turn by turn for eight turns and a half and then switch sides and go. Now, when an opposing team, now when a team is able to take the ball all the way to the end zone, one point is scored and marked onto the board. And at the end of the game, the team with the most points, most touchdowns, wins. And it's as simple as that. But let's look a little further and take a look at some of the different teams. Now, as you can see, there are just so many teams. And I'm sure with the new set coming out that they'll be releasing these teams again. Wood Elves, the Norse, the Dwarves, Skaven, Humans the um, High Elves, the Champions of Death, the Undead, the Chaos All-Stars, and as we saw putting a pounding on our Dark Elves, the Orkland Raiders. And let's not forget our poor And as you can Dark see, elves. I have just right here a, a team that I had for a very long time that we made just for fun, the New York Midgets, made out of halflings. 
So that pretty much shows you the depth of this game. Why don't we go up top and talk a little bit more about Blood Bowl. So there you have it. One of the greatest games of all time, at least in my mind. Um, this is a cult favor amongst a lot of people. And a lot of people really hold hope to, to Games Workshop because of this game and what this game means to so many people. One quick rule note. I did make a mistake through the video. And on a knockout, if the opposing team scores a touchdown or you score a touchdown, you can roll to see if they come out of the knockout box. And as well as at halftime. But let's talk about Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl is a thinking man's game with a lot of character development. You become very attached to your team. And to be a good coach, you have to be able to think on your feet and think many moves ahead. But even when you plan everything out and say you need a two or better to, to make a successful roll, to make all your plans come true, well, guess what? You roll that one. And now you have to rethink everything because now you left an opening for the other team. Can you adjust? Do you have the ability to think and make that adjustment? It is the best sports chess match that you'll ever have and it is a thinking man's game. It looks it looks like it's just some football game. It's a lot more than that because the fantasy aspect sucks you in and creating your own team and developing those players because as you play more matches they'll be able to get more skills maybe get a strength point depending on roles if you have some of the expansions that they plan on coming out with or using the living role book as been rumored to have, you'll be able to develop these characters and start leagues and just have a lot of fun where on a Friday night a bunch of your friends come over and you're taking your teams out on the pitch and and getting behind them and playing this wonderful, wonderful game. And even when you, you think you have everything all figured out, one of your star players gets hurt, they get wounded, you go down to 10 men, maybe 9 men. You're constantly having to think on your feet and constantly it's never the same game and it's always a challenge. Just when you think you can you rub a team that you think you're going to pound on, something goes wrong and you as a coach have to make the adjustments. This game has a lot of depth, a lot of character and just is a very enriched and rewarding game with tons and tons of replayability. I'm so happy that they're re-releasing this. And for those of you that didn't get a chance to play this, now you're going to. This out of print game is coming back. And I think you're gonna, if you are not a big sports fan, you're gonna love it. If you're not a big fantasy fan, but a sports fan, you're gonna love it. Either way, it has something for everybody. It's very competitive. It's a lot of fun and developing your team is, is role-playing to the max. So for me, this is one of my favorite games of all time, and I give it a 9 out of 10. I can't wait to see what they're going to do with this, and I hope you guys go out and support it when it comes out, because I think you're going to find this is a great game. With all the past versions, with video games and card games, and of course, the, this being the fifth edition that they're coming, I mean the fourth edition that they're going to come out with. I think you're going to, you can't miss on this game. So that's it for this week. We'll see you next week when we tackle another game. Until then, I'm Rob Warren and I hope you guys have a great week.